Let's run Tencent. So, I'd like to share about what we've done in Linux scheduling algorithm and its optimization. So, this is the background. So, uh, the server in Tangsen is million, million level, so it's heavy assets. How can we make the full use of it? How can we better use it? Uh, make sure it's not idled, make sure it's fully functioning. So let's say the CPU usage ratio is only 20%, now we try to boost it to 70%. So, actually, internally speaking, the server in uh, Tencent, we're still trying to boost the usage ratio of CPU and GPO, and actually, we will try to boost its um, efficiency that's yielded and save cost. So, with uh, doctor, with um, containers and other means, we try to boost the use ratio. So we have our internal KPM, and also we can also directly run our containers. We will improve the usage ratio of CPU. So we have def different definitions for a CPU, and I won't go into great details here. So uh, we cannot use it for uh, latency sensitive part, uh, and we can only use it for um, part that's with lots of um, offline threads and processings. It's mainly used for uh, offline scheduling. We need to um, use the KPM internally to make optimization and improvement. And some of the solutions are trying to run the containers on raw metal machine. And so I'd like to emphasize again, for the online service, we are uh, basically using it for uh, latency sensitive business and it's highly reliable high reliability and so for offline business um, it's low latency sensitive sensitivity and most of them are for computing so the impact on one-time latency is pretty minimal for this part of the business. So, for online business, for example, real-time uh, game that's uh, latency sensitive, they have really low reliance and uh, tolerance for uh, latency. And if you are fighting with the other competitors, uh, then there's a very high latency, it's unbearable actually. So, and for offline services, it's another example. If it's low latency sensitivity, then for example, 
if you want to check on the virus at backend or sorting your photos, then these are low sensitivity. Uh, these are the business with low sensitivity for latency. So these are offline part. It's different. So, for video games, that's not a story that's highly sensitive for latency. So, the CPU usage ratio is, or the load is not very high. And for the mix deployment, that leads to a classical issue. The blue part is uh, online series, and uh, we have um, N units of CPU, and for example, task B. We need to uh, acquire resources from A and from C. It's dependent on lock and the uh, origin is CPU zero, and it's by and B is occupied by uh, offline tasks Y, and that would cause the whole sequence is chaotic, and. CPU 1 to 4 to 2, um, it cannot be unlocked and cannot be operated. For example, Y and Z. So uh, they have different logs, it's very complicated landscape in this uh, part chain. And go back to the original question, for example, how to solve uh, this issue. Currently, different categories, different uh, enterprises are using this platform to allocate their resources in CPU and, for example, we have a mixed deployment of online and offline business and it's uncontrollable. And this is a very fair scheduling program, and it would not show any preferences to any thread or uh, process. And we have to guarantee all the main thread can be scheduled on a timely manner. So this is shared platform, this is lightweighted somehow and it cannot solve our problems. And for quarter mechanism, this mechanism, if you're familiar with it, um, C group will provide two mechanisms setting different quarter, different function groups. And we will have high frequency timer. And try to traverse the whole C group tree, and it's very heavy, it needs heavy operation. I need to double check on the quarter. And if we set a smaller peer, then we have a smaller number of offline groups, then we can avoid some ineffective 
overhead for CPU, otherwise it will be bad for the system. This is the pure and pure quarter status and the issues we've encountered in the others. It includes the balance load, low balancing. Uh, for example, in this scenario, we have 100 um, online limitation and 1,000 uh, 1, offline limitations, then we have to separate online and offline uh, thread, and if we mix them together, then that means we add another 1,000 offline thread into this 100 online thread, then we have to do low balancing, then it will be panic, and the CPU will be migrated to CPU. Why? That will cause a major impact on the uh, terminal and we have to change the context. And in high-level scenarios, we have around 200 entries. If we are migrating th thread, then obviously That means lots of consumptions, and the low balancing is not calculating these parts. We don't have a switch to control these processes. And for example, this low balancing issue. We have to strike about uh, you know to solve it. We have to strike a balance balance in uh, mixed deployment and introduce a new categories of scheduling. Uh, this BT, um, we don't have a final final name for it. We still discuss on that, and if it's lower than the set CFS, then we have to guarantee that the online service can uh, operate and will not be stripped off the resources by offline parts. We have the differentiated thread, uh, differentiated the online from offline parts, and the systems. Uh, we have to guarantee that these two parts, on on online and offline, are not inter-affected by each other. This is why offline scheduling is meaningful. We have um, CFS, we have CPU uh, scheduling, and we have a BT scheduling, RT scheduling. Why? Because first, Uh, that means we have to change a lot of codes and that will undermine probably the stability of the whole system. So we need to solve these problems with controllable cost. And the first principle is that we have to prioritize the online computing and if not, in the whole uh, this designing um, uh, mechanism, we have to guarantee the preemption of online service. And we add uh, additional support from our uh, tech side, and we add lightweighted um, low balancing mechanism. The logic behind is that we guarantee that the offline has their own load balancing mechanism and online has its own uh, load balancing mechanism as well. And we add two new interface. One is the generic um, interface that can control the overall uh, ratio of offline service. It's setting the top to uh, 20 percent. So why do we set this limit? It's some of the 
part want to do their own configuration for each set of the CPU and we cannot allow that by setting uh, the configuration that can control the load for each CPU and if you don't want to do that then you can transfer the um, control CPU to the mechanism of uh, load balancing. And we have three categories, one load balancing and uh, limitation for uh, interrupt. And we will set the priority for um, offline, offline technologies and um, offline processing and thread and uh, so for uh, the limitations of bandwidth we have our lightweighted uh, statistics and accounting we use this minor technologies we're not doing heavy accounting like a recorder it's not necessary by our standard for example uh, didn't have to be as precise as like 20% 22% it's not necessary and uh, it's about 20% so you can accept it but yeah, this is not very important and it's offline. So we need to make sure that uh, we will not add a new interrupt and uh, we have make it compatible with norm. So to make sure that the offline, when it's 6 hertz, it is compatible. So for load balancing, it is similar to the one you have heard of, but uh, we have this wait time here when we are conducting this offline tasks. We need to calculate this wait time for the basis for the load balance instead of the life cycle, the balance. Yes, so the function sometimes is closed and sometimes the function li lies idle. So the off load balancing, when we have this online load balancing, we won't consider the offline. But maybe the offline load balancing may be online. So we need to make sure that not to make the offline load balancing into the some CPUs with high level of online load balance. This is our some our trick. Trick. And based on this, our test results proved to be very good. So these two test results. So on this line we have this online service A. So for per minute the task. Maybe we focus on the failure or success rate. Why is not mixed with the offline is about 200, but uh, with the, the mix of the on offline, then there's an increase of 5,000. So this task. Yes, um, for the users, they cannot accept it. And also, its uh, failure rate, it will increase from 200 to 400, but the uh, success rate remains the same. And uh, we can make add some lightweight uh, load balance into it. For the second scenario, it's more about the average time delay. So, its average time is about 115 minute, uh, seconds, but uh, with the uh, addition, addition of the secrets, the failure rate is increasing and uh, 
But why users cannot accept this time is because while well, there's an increase of about uh, 20 milliseconds, then we can't accept it. Let's go back to this page. So for each module, there's an increase of about 20 milliseconds. And uh, this, this is quite a long time. Then there is a, a total of 120 milliseconds. Then go to this page. You can see that uh, the time delay is very long. Yes, and that's why the 20 millisecond delay is, has a huge impact. It's like a, a time increase in along the whole chain. So for this, the failure rate is not uh, increased and it's acceptable and for the reliability is also ensured. And uh, this is our off-balancing effect. So these uh, yellow curves, we have not classified it. Although it does not affect the online task, but it's unpredictable. It means that uh, the offline CPU utilization rate has not reached an uh, acceptable level for the blue curve. It means the standard uh, kernel. You can see that uh, the fluctuation is not uh, that sharp, but it uh, affects the online task. And so for offline, it's not that smooth. For the gray one, after we have done the test, it does not affect offline. And uh, it also runs very smoothly itself. And uh, also it has less sharp increase or decrease. We can see that the online can be synchronized with the offline. And also, there's a typical example. We, we can see an increase of 65% of, uh, from just 15% before. So this is a sharp increase. So for the offline task scheduling, it's a sim to do with the characteristics of the task. So if it runs very smoothly, then the rate is very high. So the CPU utilization is not that high, and it won't reach a high level. So it's to do with the characteristics of the online tasks. So the conclusion is that the Tencent kernel group, we are focusing on the researching how to improve the integration utilization rate of the servers as the server is becoming larger and larger and it is becoming more and more competitive. So we have more requirements for the scheduling and uh, network is also very important. Last year, we optimized a lot of servers last year, and uh, yes, we need to focus a lot of areas. Why the offline cannot be realized to an acceptable level because new model it emerges, it brings some problems. So BTD scheduling algorithm, what it is about? We need to classify the process. We need to classify the processes to divide them into offline and offline, online. We need to make sure that to make to make it juggle with different tasks at the same time. How to increase the utilization rate of the CPU? This is uh, the conclusion from our research. So 
I'm not sure about the patch, but uh, I think there's not a change to it. CFS will be changed later, or we adopt our thought to classify. Otherwise, the utilization rate cannot be improved. This is our development plan, the draft plan, and uh, fin finally we will finalize the whole report. And uh, our with detailed information, the uh, team Linux, the Tencent, we have released uh, TK T Linux, and you can buy it uh, in the cloud. Cloud. And this is our headquarter, cloud headquarter, including our open source programs. This is T Linux team. Yes, like the hybrid, the public and the private uh, cloud. And uh, we also have input uh, in the nationalization of the device. So that's the end of my presentation. So, yes, I may be running a bit faster because I don't go deep dive into this uh, details. Otherwise, it will concern the scheduling of the kernel. If you are interested in it, you can pay attention to my slides. So in general, it provides a new thought for our offline task. So hello. Sorry, the interpreter cannot hear what he's talking because he does not turn on the microphone. Yeah, I'm from Alibaba. We have been working on this uh, hybrid uh, uh, for a long time, and it's more about the scheduling of the CPU to ensure that uh, the high operation level of the tasks. So the questions we have encountered is more about the memory. Yes, because the hybrid deployment uh, machine is more about the offline and offline. And uh, but after the mix, mix, it will increase the memory, and it's a big increase because the utilization rate of the CPU will be increased. So it help. There's a problem with the management of the memory, and also because offline, it uh, need to come. It need to apply for a lot of the memories, then then destroy it again, and it applies for it again. So the cache will be a lot, and there's it is to do with the recycling. So it will pose the impact on the host OS, and uh, it will cause the deadlock for the online and some pressure for online tasks. So I think. We have not uh, dealt with it yet. Yes, this is about scheduling, optimization, and we also have done a lot of work on the memory. Like pay, pay, the recycling of the page. Yes, for each group, we have this page recycling for the container. And for each group, it's far ahead. We have these restrictions. If it had visited millions of files, then we, then if we recycle it at the time, then it will be too late. So, so this presentation is about about the CT, CPU utilization rate. Hello. Sorry, the interpreter cannot hear what the audience is talking about because he doesn't use a microphone. So, so for the online tasks, suppose 
you have a uh, hundred twenty eight MB, and to make a uh, hundred of them online, and twenty of them offline, we need to focus on the issue of the integration rate uh, is too low. Yes, we need to focus on the utilization rate of the machine. So, sorry, cannot hear you. I have a question, yes, about the kernel, about the scheduling algorithm for this kernel that changes to it. How can you differentiate between the online and offline? How can you tell whether it's offline or online? We mark it on the page. It is a higher level scheduling. It has this uh, offline scheduler, and it marks and it provides the interface. So you open the interface of the kernel and let it tell you, yes, the tasks, it is uh, in cooperate with the upper level tasks. If you just screen this sample, I think the offline scheduling is uh, Conduct it together with, uh, yes, I mean the upper level of the, will give you this information about how to do the scheduling. Thank you very much.